Hey guys, it's Harley Wood. Anti-walk pins, do you need them? If you're not familiar, these are anti-walk pins. So there's basically a pin for the trigger and a pin for the hammer. And you join those together and this locks them so that they cannot walk back out. It's on both sides. And here you can see I took it apart. All it is is a threaded pin. And I've only had one set ever walk back out on me. And in fact, it was on the version of my NK10, my CMMG 10 millimeter, not this one, but the one that I reviewed. All right, so my trigger pin had backed out a little bit. Tap that back in, should be good to go. Let's try it again. And here's a different flavor of it. So you can see, I actually just have screws in this version. They're not joined together, but it basically accomplishes the same thing. So do you need them? Meh, depends on who you ask, right? I don't think you need to stake your castle nut. In fact, I did a video on it and I'll post a link in the description below. This is gonna be one of those products that you're gonna say, holy, why did it take somebody so long to think of this? This is a standard pin for the trigger or the hammer. And you can see it has these little grooves on it so that if you have a standard component style trigger, the hammer springs can actually rest in those grooves and prevent it from moving laterally. But when you do a cassette style trigger, those springs from the hammer do not rest on the pins and prevent that lateral movement. All right, so shut up and get to the point, right? All right, this is the new Pro-Lock trigger from Elftman. And if you look closely, those channels for your trigger and your hammer pin are actually already threaded. And I know you're probably like, damn, how did it take somebody so long to think of that? So you simply drop this in and from the side, you run in your two little screws, your two little bolts. And with those bottom set screws, you now effectively have six points of contact that lock this thing in pretty rock solid and you don't have to fool with separate pins. Now I mentioned component style triggers earlier, right? So typically here's your standard one and those hammer pin, hammer springs will sit on those channels there and prevent it from moving side to side, right? Well, Elfman also released a component version that has those same threaded channels. I've reviewed a ton of triggers on this channel. In fact, I have two videos. The first one, I compared four popular triggers against each other. The second one, I compared five popular triggers against each other. And I'm working on a third installment of that series where I'm gonna do another five, maybe six. There's a sixth, sixth trigger that I'm uh, debating for that series. If you have not seen those, I'll post links in the description below. This is going to be one of those. So I'm not gonna show you the pull weight or any of the like features and functionality of this one. This one is adjustable. There is a range of adjustability, um, but I'm gonna save all of that information information for that comparison video that's coming up very soon. So if you want to see that, please hit that subscribe button below, including that little bell icon, and then you'll be notified when I publish that video. One of those that I reviewed was this Elftman flat bow match trigger. Absolutely love that trigger. This is the new pro lock version of that with the curved bow and you can see those threaded channels. And I'm not gonna show you the installation of this because YouTube does frown on those installation type videos. And so I could either get a channel strike or get the channel demonetized yet again. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna avoid that. But be on the lookout for that upcoming video where I'm gonna review this and I will show you the, any take up or creep that they have. I'll show you the brakes, the over travel, the reset. I show you all of that stuff from a wide variety of triggers and let you kind of decide what's right for you. Here is the component style version, okay, with the flat bow. You can see the threaded channel there. And here is the drop-in style with the curved bow. I love the skeletonized bows on these. And then once you drop it in, simply from the outside of your receiver, screw that guy in, lock it down. And again, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six points of contact once you drive those bottom set screws in. And yes, their triggers are expensive. So there are much cheaper versions out there, some of which I've reviewed and I really, really like. Some of the nice things about the Elftman, uh, especially this cassette style, is all of the bearings are sealed, completely sealed. So you'll never get grit or dirt or grime inside the bearings that you will feel in the actual trigger. 
That's it guys, that is the Prolock series. Make sure you hit subscribe. I know I've said it a couple times, but if you wanna see that upcoming comparison video with the Geisley SSP, I have another Rise Armament trigger. I'm gonna review this one, and I've got two others at least that I think you might really, really like. And I should probably just create a playlist for all of my triggers, so. Look in the description below. I cannot post a link in the description below to where you can get this, but I will post a link in the description to my website. And from there, I'll give you some additional information. So lots of links, lots of information down below. Thank you for watching guys. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Lots more videos to come and I'll see you in the next one. And before you go, some of you guys have been asking for another video for 10 millimeter versus 450 SMC. And if you noticed earlier, my MK45 is taken apart. I've got some changes that I'm doing to this, but Double Tap came through for us, and we're gonna be doing another head-to-head 10 millimeter versus 450 SMC. Be on the lookout.